So how do you get a hold of these production music libraries that I just keep telling you guys you can directly access? This might seem mysterious. You might think that it's really difficult to find them. And even if you do find them, how do you do the right research? Like, how do you know who you're working with? Should you be working with this company? Um, what kind of placements have they received? Is your music the right fit for them? Is your music on par with what they you know, currently represent? There's a lot of questions. There's a lot of uncertainty about this side of getting into the sync licensing business. But I hope in this one short video, I can kind of clear away a lot of that confusion or uncertainty that you have. I'm gonna show you here on this hopefully very short video how to find a production music library, how to do a very quick down and dirty research job on them, and also how to determine whether or not it's a legitimate company that you might wanna work with. Now, a couple of caveats. Number one, I'm gonna give you my personal sort of benchmarks that I look for, okay? You might not have these same benchmarks. You might have different uh, you know, needs or different, um, you know, specifications on what you want out of a company, but I'm gonna tell you what I look for in terms of the companies that I recommend to my students, okay? Secondly, I'm gonna block out all of the contact information, email addresses, the URLs, even the company names for whatever I find here because I do not wanna have, you know, hundreds or thousands of producers emailing whatever company I find here. I don't know which one I'm gonna find, but I don't want them to be bombarded with tons and tons of people that are just, oh, I heard of a production library from this one YouTube video. Let me just send them music. I don't want to cause product uh, headaches or problems for any company like that. Okay, so the point of this is not for you to submit to this library that I'm finding, but it's for you to see how I do this, how I walk through this process very quickly and how accessible this information is for you for free through a Google search, okay? So that's the whole point of this. So when I'm gonna look for a production music library, I'm definitely gonna go type in something like production music library, but I don't want to just show up any type of production music library. Like I don't want to see royalty free so much. The, again, these are my specifications. I don't want to see stock stuff. Um, um, yeah, I don't want to see anything like that. So basically what I want to do is put TV and film. So hopefully this is going to help narrow out a lot of the royalty free micro licensing websites, which is more for like online placements. And I want really more of those companies that are having TV and film clients uh, served. Okay, so let's go ahead and do a Google search and see what comes up. First thing, we're gonna scroll down through all of these little sponsored um, results, okay? So you never wanna go through a sponsored result on anything. In fact, what I wanna do is pull my picture to the other side so you can see that. But we don't wanna see anything sponsored, okay? Sponsored is usually going to be um, a company that is trying to, usually it's gonna be the micro licensing sites or the royalty free thing. So you basically can just skip through that. One quick note, as I was editing the video, I realized I didn't explain one very important point about all those sponsored results and why I don't recommend you submit your music to them. Those companies, even though they're legitimate companies and they're doing business in their own way, they are essentially paying to broadcast their services to the masses, right? They want, when you type anything about production music, they wanna show up first. So the issue with that for you is that they have, they want as many clients as they possibly can find and they want as many producers and composers as they can possibly find. So it's just a huge, huge company that is not likely going to be able to give you any direct personal connection, number one. And number two, you know, allowing you to create direct relationships is probably impossible as well. In fact, most of these companies that are advertising like that, they're gonna have a sort of standardized sign-up form because they have so many people, you know, signing up. I, I even heard of one of them that has literally like a, a ticket, like customer service response system because like they have that many producers and composers, they have to have a ticketing system, right? That's the kind of company and, and situation that I am not recommending and I'm not talking about in this video. What I'm talking about are boutique, TV, film, music libraries that are usually run by one or a handful of people that can allow you to create direct relationships with them and then get high quality TV and film placements, okay? So with that, let's get back to the video. Uh, you might say, see some really big companies pop up. So Universal is popping up here. Um, I don't recommend you go directly to Universal if you wanna work with Universal. You need to go and research one of their sub catalogs to work with Universal. But I'm not gonna get into that in this video. I can do that in another video for sure. But this one I wanna talk about one of those sort of boutique mom and pop shops that might be working with Universal, but they might have other sub publishers as well. So if you see like an APM, a BMG, a Universal, I would say you probably wanna steer clear of trying to submit directly to them. Chances are you're, they're probably not gonna take you on as an individual composer, but that doesn't mean you can't work directly with high quality production music libraries. So let's keep going down. Um, see, I see the word royalty free right here. Eh, for me, I don't wanna see anything royalty free. Like that's not my particular uh, bread and butter. Some of you guys might be into that. 
I'm not into that. I want royalties. I want placements on TV. So I never use, go for a company that has something like that. Okay, this one says, has a massive library of music ranging in all genres, able to be used for TV shows, films, as well as commercials. I don't see royalty free. It's not a sponsored one. It's the first one that's popping up. Let's see what comes up. Wow, okay. Pretty professional looking website here. You can see down here, they have their clients going by. These are the ones that they've worked with. These are brand names. These are household names. I'll maybe, if I can make this website a little bigger. There you go. You can kind of see a little bit more about what's going on there, but definitely blocking out, you know, specifics here. I don't want to uh, blow them up that way. It's not fair for them. Um, so yeah, let's maybe go to about them. Let's just see what they got, what they say about who they are and what we can learn. Okay. Uh, brings musicians from all around the world. Okay. They all kind of say sometimes the same thing, you know, they're talking about becoming an artist with this company. Okay. We're looking for new artists and composers to join our growing family. If you'd like to offer your best music, uh, submit your music to us for review. Okay, right here, guys. So this is how accessible some of these companies are. This one actually has a button. You click on it. Let's see where it takes us to. Right there. Um, first name, company, email. I'm looking to, what do you want to do? License, submit music, submit music, choose a role. Are you a producer, or a musician? You probably put musician. And there you go. You're ready to go to submit to this company. Now, let's see what kind of clients they have. They had that little scroll thing, so I wanna see what kind of clients they have. All right, Temptation Island, World of Dance, um, F Word, Me, Her, The Bachelor, okay. Reality TV shows. Those are the ones that I'm seeing in terms of the ones that they are showing off. So it sounds like a lot of reality TV shows, um, cooking shows, dance shows, um, elimination shows. That seems to be their bread and butter. So. If I see something like this, I'm thinking immediately tension music, right? Because think about what kind of music gets placed in here. You don't see trailers here. You don't see sports, right? You don't see anything like that. So you got to, you know, kind of use your head here. And also this is why you should be watching TV from time to time. What kind of music are you hearing on these types of reality TV shows? This is giving you an insight into what type of a library this is, who their clients are, who they primarily serve, and what kind of music is really going to do well with this particular company, okay? That took me about, what, three minutes, two minutes to figure that out, okay? So this is not, it doesn't require a PhD um, to, to do a deep dive into figuring out what's going on here. So why don't we go into um, the search library. Let's kind of take out, uh, we're not gonna play the music here, like I said, but I just wanna kind of see what's going on here. Most libraries will have something like this where you can literally buy genre, you can see right here. You can go check it out. So let's say that you do uh, maybe hip hop, something like that. And you want to get into like some tension sort of hip hop tracks, which, which would do really well with those kind of reality TV shows. Well, you can go through here, you can check out and maybe they have a mood as well. Uh, they have aggressive, anxious, anxious might be it. Um, dark, that could be it. Um, I wonder if they have something actually literally tension for the T's. Let's see. Uh, that's a lot of t there's tense. Let's try tense. There you go. You got hip hop and tense. So what you can do right here is go through all of these tracks and listen to them and check out what they have and see the quality and listen to what they have going on in terms of is it higher quality than what you're doing? Is it lower quality than what you're doing? And you can A, B compare after clicking play on any of these tracks what they have already accepted, right? This is what they've already accepted and what they feel will do well with their clients right there all that research is 100 percent free you can do all of this research 100 percent on your own um and you can go by any other genre that you want to let's say it's not hip-hop you can come back to here uh, maybe i'll do a refresh on this whole page so we can get all of our search uh, start a new search there we go so i don't know you want to do let's say you're a rock producer okay and same kind of thing though you probably want to go into something a little bit more tense let's do uh, maybe anxious let's see what happens in anxious um there you go so you got all of their anxious rock tunes. Now there's a lot here, okay? So when, the next thing I'm gonna teach you guys is when you see something like this, so rock seems like it's pretty well covered, right? A lot of rock tracks going on here. You, you usually don't want to probably pile on another of 10 of your tracks if they've already got a pretty large number of tracks in your particular uh, genre. Now, how many is too many? Very subjective, of course, but I would say if you see something like this where right off the bat you see that rock is very well covered and hip hop was kind of undercovered, uh, underserved, but there still was some hip hop music there. There was definitely a, a good chunk of hip hop tracks there. I would go in that hip hop direction. I would feel that like, if I produce hip hop, this would be a better um, kind of a library for me to partner with. If I did rock, probably wouldn't be my first choice just because there's a lot of other tracks 
kind of already out there potentially getting those placements. So just a higher barrier for me, or like I should say the numbers are a little bit not in as much as my favor if I work with a company like this, okay? So some of the stuff you do need to make sort of your best guess. It's a little bit of a subjective uh, judgment in terms of if you feel it's there. But what I, what I will warn you guys against is don't go into a library and if let's say you see like nothing, and sometimes we can do this, like let's do a, a research here. So as you're searching through this and you're looking for, you know, maybe some obscure, um, you know, genre. So you, let's say you're looking through all of these and you're like, well, I don't see polka music or whatever it is. I mean, that might be a ridiculous example, but whatever you produce, let's say you don't see it here. Or if you do click on it, you see a very, very small number of tracks in that. Like this is a holiday one. Eh, holiday, they're pretty well covered. But let's say you find something and this doesn't happen in a lot of these companies where you find a genre and they've got like three tracks or maybe like even just 10 tracks. That's not necessarily an indication that you should just throw your music at them because you're like, well, I will be having way higher chances of getting those placements because they've only got a couple of tracks in this particular style of music. Yes, but the chance, the higher chance, the higher probability is that if there's only a couple of tracks in that particular genre, it's because there's a very low demand with their clients. So they might have a couple of tracks just over the years. It sort of floated into their company, but they're not actively looking for that music. And that's just something to have just in case. But you don't want to be putting just in case music into these companies. You want to make sure that you are working uh, to create the most licensable, the most useful music that can get placed very, very, very quickly, okay? So um, yeah, so that's pretty much what you can do. And you can listen to all these tracks, pretty much most of these libraries, you can go listen to them. I'd say of all the libraries that I've recommended to my students, 80 to 90% of them, you can go and li listen to all this stuff. You can see their clients, you can see what they do. Uh, another thing you definitely want to do as well, um, let me click on some of the other links. I don't know if we can do some more research. You definitely want to look at the most, the kind of recent stuff that they've done. You don't want to see that the maybe the last time they put out, um, you know, had some placements was, you know, 2015 or 2012. So before we wrap up this one, let's go ahead and take a look at their About Us again. We didn't go all the way to the bottom of that page. So they have their submission, as I said before, if you guys want to work with a company like this, it's right there, okay, it's not that hard hard contact us they also have the contact let me see um so you also do this submit music but i would use the other one the other one's obviously a clear submit music button so you can do that again it's right there guys this is not like <laughs> some secret society that doesn't want you to find them like they're there they're ready for you so they're talking about how they got started uh they're talking about their clients here's our important part right here okay so here's a really good list of a lot of their clients including the ones we saw before and some other ones uh, yeah so you can see like as you look at their websites like this, what are you noticing? Are you seeing a lot of sports placements? Are you seeing a lot of film placements, documentaries? Or what I see here is reality TV shows, competition shows, cooking shows, elimination shows. That's definitely what I'm seeing here. Um, and fairly recent ones, okay? So this is a pretty good indicator that they're doing some really good stuff. And you can actually go through some of these and, and find more as they go. But yeah, a lot of reality TV shows. And for me, what I notice is that reality TV shows, the type of music that usually does well with that um, is going to be that minimal tension music. It's going to be um, some hip hop. It can be some EDM, um, some rock as well. But I think it's more of that kind of like, think about if you go watch it on an elimination show or like a cooking show where there's a time you know limit or whatever, think about that tension, that intensity, that waiting to see who's going to get eliminated. Like a lot of that music gets eaten up all over the place in this kind of, um, this kind of a company. So that's basically what I would want to do is submit the right kind of music to this time of a company to try to make it work uh, well for me. So that's it, guys. That, how long did that take? You know, maybe 10 minutes at the most. And I was probably taking longer than I needed to just so I could explain this to you. But you can certainly just do this over and over and over again for these companies. Go back to your Google search, type in that production music library, TV and film, and keep going and literally take notes, get a little Excel sheet. And literally, I'm talking about a Saturday and a Sunday. You can have 10 uh, companies very quickly that you can decide to submit to them one at a time. And I do recommend that. I do not recommend you get 10 companies, get all their contact info and send the same music to all of them because you could potentially burn out and have one company really mad at you that you overpromised multiple companies and now you have to pick which one you're going to give your music to. So not a smart idea. You don't want to make enemies in this business on day one, right? So that's what you can do on your own. Now I have something called Sync Edge, okay? Sync Edge is essentially what I just did for you on steroids, okay? So you're gonna get access to over 60 music libraries in the same way that I just did, except for you do get to see the company name, you do get to see their email address, and you get to listen to their music. I play their music on a video, and the videos ju look just like this, and it's a, a monthly program. You don't have to commit, though, okay? So you can literally sign up, you can join. It's $24.99, so basically 25 bucks, you get access to 60 companies just like this. 
And because I've shortened these videos, they're like five to 10 minutes long at the most. And I give you everything that I just gave you in terms of a, a really quick analysis of how you can determine whether or not the, it's the right one for you. And I also have each one categorized by its genre. So if you are for sure like a hip hop producer, you can just not watch any of the ones that I feel is better for rock or EDM or orchestral. You can just go find all the hip hop ones, right? Doesn't mean that you can't submit hip hop to like a one that I say it's better for rock, but just know that I'm giving you guys specific genres because I think there's certain genres as I just explained that do better with certain companies, but you're free to submit to any ones that you feel is right for you, okay? So with Sync Edge and essentially an afternoon, right? I mean, with 60 essentially uh, uh, videos, five to 10 minutes each, Talking about just a couple of hours. That's really all we're talking about. You don't have to do them all in one day if you don't want to, but literally you could go get a cup of coffee. You know, again, have the kids off with the wife, take some time for yourself, make some notes, and literally let me do all this research for you and let you know what I'm liking about these companies and why they're being, why they're getting added to my recommendation list, okay? I will explain to you what signs of health I'm seeing, why their placements are great, why it's recent work, why they're releasing, uh, recently uh, releasing music. That's also a really good thing. You don't want a library that released music back in 2015 or something like that, the last time they released something new. You need to see a library that's actively releasing music at least within the last year, okay? So those are the kind of things that you're going to see uh, with Syncage. And again, it's a month-to-month -month program because every month on the first, I release two new libraries. So I'll do two, uh, another breakdown, essentially, of two new companies that you can get access to. But you know, after you go in for your weekend and see the libraries that you want to, and you decide, you know what, I think I'm, I'm good. Cancel your membership. Email me, jesse at syncmymusic.com. Just cancel it. No, no big deal. I, I really want you guys to be empowered. That's what I'm doing this for, okay? So I want you guys to have access to this information so you can directly partner with these companies. And I'm doing a lot of the work for you so that, you know, I know you guys have busy lives, you have families, you have jobs, you have a lot of things going on, but that's still no excuse for you not creating direct relationships in this business. And that's what this video was aimed at, is to help you do that exactly, just do exactly that. So whether or not you wanna do it on your own or you wanna use something like Sync Edge, either way is totally cool. I just hope that I'm a part of a, of a of a solution for you to sort of get rid of this maybe limiting belief that getting in contact with libraries is too hard or it's going to take too much time or you don't really know what you're doing and you better leave that up to other professionals. Nonsense. All that's nonsense. I'm trying to equip you guys with the knowledge and the resources to be able to do this 100% on your own in your spare time and you definitely can do that. I have many members, many students that have families, have jobs, have busy lives because they're using my services though, they can do this in a very, very quick turnaround. And if you come to the link, there's a link at the bottom of these, or in the description box of this video, you can learn a little bit more. Uh, we got some great questions and answers if you have any questions about this. But we also have, this is a really important part, all, or not all of them, but a good chunk of our testimonials from members who actually use this and got accepted. And some of them got accepted within you know 48 hours, some of them within uh, one and a half hours. This stuff happens very, very, very quickly when you have the right submission to the right company with the right music, okay? So you guys need to do the work. I'm not guaranteeing you're getting accepted. You know, I don't guarantee what libraries say yes or no to, out of my control. But I can give you really great insights, I can give you great recommendations, and I can give you sort of the smart way to approach these companies so that you don't look like an amateur, you don't like somebody who's just like spamming your music, and that they, they take you seriously. So I can definitely guide you on that to at least increase your chances of getting accepted. And then we have a lot of written testimonials as well. So this stuff works, guys. It's real, okay? This is a real service, This is a re and it gets real results. So you can definitely rest assured that you're gonna be in really good hands when you sign up for Sync Edge. But again, don't sign up for it if you don't want to, that's fine. Just now, from, from now on, please start doing your own research. Please start creating a little you know, Google sheet for yourself and keep track of these libraries and do maybe just one a day, you know, an extra five or 10 minutes before you go to work every day. You can, you can do that, right? And at the end of the week, you're gonna have seven new companies that you could potentially start working with. That's how accessible this stuff is. That's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you guys so much.